Hi Joyful Chefs, welcome to Erica's Joyful Oven. Today I'm going to share with you my recipe for a delicious silky dalpuri roti. So let's get started. So first of all, we have to prepare the filling for the roti. And here I have one pound of dal that I've measured out. I'll add the dal to a boiling pot and I will wash the dal making sure there's no stones or any bits that I don't want. Next, I'll add some water and wash the dal. I'll repeat this process about two or three times until the water runs clear. Next, I'll add six and a half cups of room temperature water and I do want to infuse a lot of flavor into the dal. So I'm going to add in three large cloves of garlic that I've pounded with the skin on, one large pimento, one large hot pepper, one teaspoon of brown sugar, two teaspoons of salt and a quarter teaspoon of turmeric powder. Stir this all together and I'll place this on the stove on a medium heat for about 45 minutes until the dal is nice and soft. While it's boiling, you can easily remove any froth from on top of the dal and let it continue to cook until it's simmered down. After 45 minutes on a medium temperature, the dal is ready. I'll know it's ready when I press it between my fingers and it just crumbles. You don't want the dal to get mushy in the pot, so definitely don't let it overboil and don't let it burn. And at the same time, you want to make sure that there's no hard bits of dal left behind that can baste the roti as you roll. So now that the dal has been boiled, it's nice and soft. And I'm going to get ready to place this into my dal milk. I also have some fresh seasonings that I'm going to add. So here I have my dal mill and the first thing to go in would be my seasonings. So two large pimento goes into the mill together with three large cloves of garlic that I've peeled and 12 large leaves of shadow benny or bandania. I'm going to grind this together as finely as I can and if you wanted to, you could add some hot pepper in here. I'll place this fresh seasoning in a separate bowl and set it aside. And now I'm ready to grind it all. So the first thing to go in would be the pimento pepper and it's optional, you can add in the hot pepper. I'm going to remove those pieces of garlic peel. My mom always insists on adding the garlic peel while the dal is boiling. And why not? Garlic peel is known to add a lot of flavor and maybe that's why it's added to a lot of different stocks and stews. So I've added a dal to the mill and I'm going to grind as finely as I can into a large bowl. You can also do this in a fruit processor but it's a little bit more tricky to make sure that you get the dal at a very fine texture. Now the dal is very finely ground and so is my seasonings. I'm going to take this over to the stove. Into a large pot over a medium heat, I'm going to add in one and a half tablespoons of vegetable oil. Next, I'll add in my seasonings. Almost immediately, I'll add in one tablespoon of ground jeera. And again, immediately after, I'm going to add in the ground dal. So what I'm doing is lightly patching the dal. This is going to take out any excess moisture and get rid of those lumps that you're seeing. It's also going to lightly cook the jeera so you're gonna get a better flavor in the dal puree. This is best over a low to medium temperature so that you don't overcook the dal. And this is a great time to add in some extra jeera. I'm adding in an extra tablespoon and a half of ground jeera and just a pinch of salt to taste. You'll know the dal is ready when the texture becomes crumbly and there's no longer any large lumps. I can smell the seasoning, I can smell the jeera. This smells so good. And when this is done right, at this point, your mouth is already supposed to be watering. Thankfully, the hardest part is over. I'll set this aside to cool while I prepare the dough. The dal puri dough is quite simple. So in a large mixing bowl, I have four cups of flour that I've sifted. I'm going to add in four teaspoons of baking powder. Mix this together and set it aside. Next, into one and three quarter cups of very warm water, I've added one teaspoon of vinegar. Give this a quick stir and then I'm gonna add this into the flour. I'm gonna knead this together to form a soft to medium dough, a little bit more on the softer side. If necessary, you can add in an additional two tablespoons of very warm water. 
I can already hear the questions. Why is she adding vinegar? Well, if you've tried my bus up shot recipe, you'll know that the vinegar softens the gluten in the flour and gives you a silky soft roti. So with the dalbury, the same thing applies. It's going to keep the dough very soft and it's going to give you a roti that is so silky and smooth. So once the dough comes together, I'm going to let it rest for about 5 minutes. After 5 minutes, I have added some vegetable oil on my hand and I'm going to knead the dough. It is going to be a little bit sticky so you can add in a tablespoon or two extra dried flour if necessary. And I'm going to knead the dough just until it forms a smooth surface. The surface of the dough is nice and smooth but it's no longer sticky. I'm going to add some oil to the surface and cover with plastic wrap. It isn't much longer, in just 10 minutes the dough will be ready to make the lawyers. Onto a lightly floured surface, I'm going to add the dough and you can see that it hasn't risen but it's nice and soft. I'm going to divide the dough into 8 equal pieces. You can make the lawyers a little larger or smaller depending on the size of your towel. I'm going to form each lawyer into a ball so I'm pinching the edges together to form a seal and I'll keep them lightly dusted with dried flour. The next step is to fill these lawyers with the dalbury filling and so I'm going to gently press the dough to form a flat disc. I want the edges to be a little thinner than the insides. What I typically do is form an inverted bowl like so. I'm pressing the edges a little thinner than the center of the disc. I will add a light dusting of dried flour. So next I'm going to fill the dal filling into this little bowl that I've created. I typically add about 3 to 4 tablespoons depending on the size of the lawyer. Now some things that are important to note is the one that dusting of flour before you add the dal is important. It's also important to make the edges a little thinner. And here you can see that thin edge just makes it easier for me to seal the lawyer as I close it. And it also avoids having a huge lump of flour on the end. Something else that's important is keeping your lawyers dusted with flour so that it's not going to become sticky while it's resting. I would also say it's important not to make the disc too thin or else the dowel is going to burst through as you try to roll it. And lastly, you want to add in just the right amount of dal and this takes some practice. So the more that you make this recipe, the better you'll get at it. So here I'm pressing the dal into the little bowl just to make sure that I have enough filling to spread throughout the entire dalbury. This amount of dal filling can give you up to 16 dalbury roti. And so what I like to do is add the leftover filling into a Ziploc bag and it stays really well in the freezer for up to 2 months. So the next time I'm craving dalbury, it's even easier to make. The roti is immediately ready to cook. I start with the first one that I've filled and I'm going to gently press the filling all the way to the ends of the dough. Now I begin rolling, keeping the surface of the dough and the counter lightly floured. I'm flipping the dough often as I roll just to make sure it doesn't stick to the surface and to give me an equally thin roti on both sides. I'm really focusing on those ends, getting them nice and thin and making sure that they are filled with the filling. This is going to make sure the dalbury swells evenly and that the ends are equally nice and silky. And as you roll, take a moment to admire those bits of seasoning speaking at you. You know this is going to be some really good dalbury. If there are any little spots where the flour may have burst, you can easily add a bit of dried flour over the spot. 
Give it a quick roll and it should seal the spot. Add the roti onto a hot towel over a medium heat and immediately I'm going to brush some vegetable oil over the top of the dough. You can use a pastry brush or you can use a cloth brush. I remember growing up there were these little brushes made of cloth and that is what was used to make galpuri or even those enamel cups. So I'm going to flip the roti and add another light brushing of vegetable oil on the other side. Already the roti begins to swell as does the anticipation. I'm so excited. The roti is silky as you can see. It's stretching. It's so nice and soft. The dal has spread all the way to the edges and you can see that the ends of the roti might just be the best part. Each roti just takes about a minute to a minute and a half to be finished. You don't want to leave this on the heat too long or else it's going to become stiff. I hope you guys enjoyed today's recipe. For more of my recipes, you can find me at facebook.com slash joyful oven and youtube.com slash joyful oven. Be sure to like and subscribe and invite your friends to do the same. So here is the finished Dalpuri roti. It is so soft and silky as you can see. I love that the ends are equally soft and silky. This is so well seasoned and I love that the dal made it all the way through the roti. This is going to be great with some curry or maybe some stew. This roti stays soft and silky. It is best stored tightly wrapped in some roti paper or wax paper and then in a kitchen towel. You want to make sure that that steam is trapped so that it's going to keep the roti nice and soft. I know you love this recipe and until next time from Erica's Joyful Oven, happy baking and happy cooking!